What would you suggest as an entry level project in terms of complexity? Like, I know all the modeling techniques and such, but never did any major projects. Okay, so I think model something like a motorcycle cool would probably be the best. I'll show you. I'll show you a good uh, a good portfolio piece. God, I always forget his last name. Andreas. It's LZ. I thought it was Elzelius or something. Elzelius? Fuck. Uh, battle from Snow Speed. That one. Not this. This is the guy I was after. So doing something like this, I think is a really strong portfolio piece. So if you build like a photoreal motorcycle, I think it's a very strong piece. Just because it has like a, a variety of different forms, you have... Yeah, it's really fucking good. So you have a variety of different forms, you can... There's lots of different materials. You've got your sleek parts of the body, you've got the complexity of the mech, you've got things like tires. And if you build something like this to like a, a photoreal level, it's a very strong portfolio piece. So I would rather see just one motorcycle like this built to this level than like four things that are kind of average. Also the other main benefit of building something like this is the fact that you can get lots of reference for it. So say for example, if you went to a museum, I mean I know with COVID it's a bit hard, but if you went to a museum and you found like a motorcycle, you can take plenty of reference pictures yourself and copy it. So people keep asking me like, oh, should I do this concept art piece? I'm like, no, 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 build, build from real life. Because if you build from real life, you have unlimited reference and you can show you've copied the reference exactly. And you also learn how things work when you do this sort of stuff. What's this made in? Uh, I don't know, probably Max. This guy works at uh, DICE. But yeah, this is usually why I would suggest doing something like this. You learn about the real world. You have unlimited reference to, to copy from. Like that's the thing, right? A lot of students, they try and just make stuff up. And if the concept looks like trash, your, it doesn't matter how good your topology is, it's gonna look trash. But with this, you kind of know what you need to do already. Yeah, this is the main thing people keep asking about. Like, what should I make for my portfolio? I think something like this, because it's complex. It has a variety of different forms and different materials. The yeah, Andreas, motorcycle is amazing. Something like this. Like, if you can show, like, renders like this with clean topology, like, you're set. I know this sounds kind of entry level. <laughs> Yeah, I, I constantly tell people to build from real life just because you learn how real, like the real world works and that's really important for making fictional things look real is having an understanding of how the world works and how things like fit together and stuff like that. Damn, this is so cool. And that's the thing, like, especially if you want to texture it as well, you have a, a wide variety of different materials to texture and different materials to shade. So that's why I think the motorcycle is a really good thing. You've got your leather, you've got your, your sort of plastic. Looking at this one and looking at the motorcycle in your portfolio makes you want to remove it. <laughs> Yeah, his, that's the thing, like, if you can pull off something to a photoreal level like this, like, you can get a job pretty easily. Also, you have, like, complex things, like the headlights, stuff like that, it was pretty cool. If you were going to...
build something like this, I would model in the uh, the grooves of the tires. Like, don't do this in texture. Model the actually model the grooves in. It'll be a nice like modeling exercise for you. Um, in VFX, would you want to see the text, the artist texture the bike as well? Okay, the main thing is right is your texturing has to be as strong as your modeling. If you do that, because if you just model, if you make a really nice model but your texture looks trash, you might. Like, people might question your creative eye. If you can make a good model, but you can't see your texture and shader looks bad, it could pull down your model. So if your texturing isn't at the level of your modeling, I would just do a model. But even then, don't just do a model in like a... Um, don't just do like a model and have like a... Like your Maya default viewport. Like, do like a nice gray render of it. Yeah, this guy's stuff is great. Like, same thing, even if you built a car, I, th I don't think the exterior of the car is enough for a modeling portfolio. You gotta do the interior. I think he did the interior as well, this one. This one's really nice. Like, if you, if you model to this level of detail, and it looks this good, you can get a job pretty easily. Especially the interior. Like, I I think at this stage, the exterior of a car alone isn't enough. Because, like, a lot of people can do the exterior. But the interior is really nice. Same thing with this, right? You have the cool, sleek, elegant shapes of the exterior. But then you have, like, the nice, soft complexity of the interior. So something like this shows, you know, that you can deal with multiple different forms. And that's, a, that's another great thing of something like this car again, is you can go and take photos of this car if you can have access to it. The lighting? Yeah, the lighting is superb. That's the thing, like even with this, you could probably hire this person as a lighter. I mean, this guy is a professional in the, in the industry for quite a while, but... The presentation is 10 out of 10? Yeah, exactly. Like, people don't really think about the presentation, but it is a big deal. Like, if your presentation looks bad, like, people will question your eye. Like, it doesn't matter if you have good topology, but if your presentation looks terrible, it, they might just simply pick someone that has better presentation. The only thing stopping you from getting a good portfolio piece is willingness to put the time required. Well, that's kind of concerning then, because how can someone hire you for a job if you're not willing to put the time into the work? <laughs> Like, that's the thing, right? Like, when, when people look at your portfolio, you can't explain anything to the person. They see they see this, and within, like, five seconds, they've decided if they'll hire you or not. <laughs> yeah. This stuff is amazing. Like, also, like, you can do this sort of stuff for your portfolio, but I, I would definitely have, like, this sort of stuff first. Like, this, the Star Wars aesthetic is kind of easy. It's just grungy, kit-bashed. So I, th I think this takes a lot less skill to do than pulling off this. I think this is a much harder thing to do. Well, especially this. I think this is probably the hardest one. Like, pulling off this stuff quite nice is quite good. It's gonna take a year? Hmm, I don't think so. It shouldn't take a year to do something like this. When you finish school? Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, this is the general thing I would do. I definitely advise people to do something like this. Alright, that's not for that. 